Hello and welcome to another Miniature Arms video and today I'm going to make this look like this. So the plan is for this video to take you along the process as I take this classic train set, um, read that as cheap plastic train set, um, and turn it into some terrain for my North African bolt action table. So I've been working on a, a North um, African 8th British 8th Army project. I'll link in the project vlogs now. Um, and if you've been following those along or watched other videos on the channel, you may have seen this before. Um, but I was looking for um, a train set to, to sort of fit in with the, the 28 mil scale that's used for bolt action to, to match the Warlord Games figures. Um, and it was a little bit difficult, it was a little bit tricky. Most regular train scales are too small. Um, the, the ones that were the right size um, aren't common in the UK or were only common maybe 50 years ago. So they're, they're just, they're not only are they extremely expensive, they're also not really the right thing to use. So I was Googling around, I was chatting to a friend of mine who does a little bit of um, railway hobby and go and check out Emperor's Path. He, he does wargaming stuff as well. And then very recently, he's just been um, dabbling, well, I say more than dabbling actually, into a railway setup, returned to something he, he hasn't done since his youth. So it's quite cool. So head over to Emperor's Path. I'll put a link to his um, channel in my show notes as well but some very good friend of mine and um, he's got some good stuff there but anyway back to the case in hand um, I was googling away and I found a blog called Shed Wars and um, on this blog I found the answer to my problems um, cheap plastic train sets and I believe that this while it looks slightly different is from the same company it's probably made in China or something like that I haven't really checked on the on the back of the box but I picked this up on Amazon and it was very cheap it's under 20 pounds I believe I will double check that now and that will appear on the screen um, but it's here and it's ready and I, and I wanted to get going now I'm gonna give it a little bit of an unboxing I'll open it up and sort of talk you through the parts I'm going to use um, and then I'll just show you the the table setup as it is um, and the, the layout um, that I I want to, to play where I want to place the track essentially. There's a little bit of glare on the box there but essentially you get your you get an engine, um, you get a carriage, um, you get 12 slight bends, six straights um, and it's 437 centimeters of track. Um, it is battery operated so I do want if I want it to uh, chuck itself along the, um, the bolt action table then I can do but um, that's not my priority but if I can leave it working I will do. Bits I'm going to use, bits I'm not going to use. I'm definitely going to be using the engine. Engine's going to be uh, perfect and it, and it scales quite well with 28mm models, which you'll have seen from those images a little while ago. And I'll pop another one on the screen now. Um, it's about as close as you can get, I think, and it's definitely usable. So the plan for this is definitely going to be to cover up the LED light there. Um, and I want to airbrush prime rather than get out there with a rattle can because I feel I might gum up all the, the working mechanisms so I want to airbrush prime the wheels and all the under parts here um, but I feel I'm going to work with what we already have here and weather this rather than repaint the whole thing it'll speed the process up a little bit so I'll probably hand paint in some of these little parts and things black out the windows but I'm not going to completely prime it and repaint everything so I want this to be a fairly quick project um, but I also think that these colours um, will be usable there's another reason for that and I'll come on to it with this bit here so when you're dragging the coal is that we've got some some serial numbers etc on the side of this and I don't have any uh, um, decals or, or anything like that that I'll, I'll be able to put on the train afterwards I don't really want to go searching for it um, and I quite like those so if I keep this basic color and I actually weather this um, I think that will do the job but I am going to mask it off and I'm going to prime the wheels black as well before I can paint them in silver I'm probably going to use the carriage um, my concern again is this all this bright yellow so the, I'll probably mask it off and airbrush prime underneath. Um, the insides are a little bit of a concern to me because it's quite bright yellow but I'm just wondering if I can get the airbrush in there at all just to add a bit of shadow so that'll be interesting to, to, to see how I get along. That's going to go in the bin or be passed on to my kids um, and then we're going to have enough track that I need to, to kind of go from 
one side of the table to the other at a little bit of an angle. Um, I may keep some back, which I can do separate layouts. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna glue them together. If I do, then it's gonna make it a little bit harder to store. But if I don't, am I gonna chip the paint on and off when I unclip them? We'll have to see how it goes. But anyway, well, I'll take you over to the table now um, and I'll show you the layout that I want to do with the track. And there we are, so a bit of a, a shot step back from the table. I've um, very loosely started to throw the other bits on the table. I don't think the buildings are quite straight or where I want them at the moment, but they're there thereabouts. But the most important thing is the angle of the track there. So I've, very, I've used very, very few parts of it. Um, I think I've used three of the curves and three of the straights. So there's a lot left, so I could build a lot more sh should I wish to. Um, so that, that's one option. Um, I think it's one of the most ob unobtrusive options is obviously it's there as a, as a piece of terrain. It's not there to be um, get in the way and be running around the board too much. Um, and I think that that kind of works fairly well. And I could probably maybe just split it in the middle um, and um, save me taking all the parts and maybe glue the other parts together um, knowing that those two sections kind of fit like there on the board and you know you could play around with it a little bit more I'll probably paint up a couple more sections as well just so I've got a couple of different layouts um, so I can measure it so that it, it goes across the whole board so it's like a four foot stretch um, but that's not too bad at all I think that I quite I quite you know I quite like the layout as it is there and I'm going to build towards a six by four table. Um, obviously, I may use it, uh, use a four by four playing area sometimes, but um, I'm sort of gaming towards a, a six by four table. Um, you know, I haven't played bolt action yet. I'm new to the the hobby. Um, I'm very much going to be more of a, a sort of a, a beer and pretzels um, narrative style historical gamer. Um, so I'm not really thinking too much about how it would work in terms of a, um, a tournament setting because that's probably not the way I'm going to end up playing. Never say never, but um, that's not my primary focus. If you're watching this video thinking about that, it is that track's going to do nothing as far as I'm aware in game. And when the train's on there, that obviously might do a little bit more in terms of um, it'll offer cover and things. Um, but it's there just to, just to look cool, really. So I've measured the track and it's about five foot at the moment. So cutting in half is, uh, I think it's gonna work really well. Um, and, and I will um, paint up a couple of other sections at a time, as I, as I said earlier, and I think that's gonna work really well just to create a couple of slightly different layouts um, should I need them. And as you can see, I've also just popped the train on there at the moment to give it a little bit of an idea of scale or what it might look on the board. I'm planning on picking up a Sarissa Precision El Alamein station. You can buy the train station um, and that will fit, I imagine, up towards the town area. The, the hills that are underneath the mat at the moment are just sort of rolled up t-shirts and things, so they're not in there necessarily in their final placements. But in terms of where the track is in relation to buildings and things, it gives me enough of an idea that I can kind of move it around and place it enough. Now the plan is, not to show you stage by stage it's not a tutorial um, i'm going to go away and enjoy my hobby but what i'll do is at the end of each stage i'll, I'll come back and uh, talk about the progress on the video and um, talk about any challenges and things i've learned etc um, and by the end of the video hopefully it'll all be painted and done so on to the next stages now first of all i've cracked out the airbrush and you may hear it going off in the background, so apologies if you do. Um, and, and gone in with a black prime, so Vallejo black primer. Um, and I've used that to go underneath um, the, the, the engine. You can still see a bit of red coming through there. It won't, that'll, be, that'll be on the track. But I've gone through the engine, covered over most of the bright plastic that you could see before. But I've also used it just to put a bit of shadow and the first layers of where soot may be, because that'll help me with the weathering process later on. Um, I've done the same with the coal cart, it's not what it's called is it, but um, I've deliberately allowed overspray once I've been priming these yellowy plasticky wheels or bluey plastic or whatever it was before, so it looks like some weathering and build up and, I, and I've put a bit of sort of shadow in there as well. It's a very matte, obviously it's a primer so it's very matte, so it works really well as a sooty effect. Um, and then onto the carriage. I did spray a little bit in through the windows just to darken it down a little bit and there you go there's the airbrush um, and then I've just been priming over 
um, most of the yellow. Some of it's chipping off and coming through. That's going to happen with this kind of primer. But what I'm going to do next is seal it. I'm going to give it a very quick glow, a coat of gloss. Um, and then I'm going to hit it with some oil washes, which will really make it look grimy and, and dirty. Then after that, once it's dry, I'll be able to hit it with um, a mat just to mat it back down again. And then I'll be able to go on with, with a few other um, effects, probably some of the dust effects from AK, that kind of stuff. So track wise, I broke the large track into two sections, which I'll zoom out in a minute and show you. And I painted up a third one as well, or made up a third one as well, which I can turn it into a four foot rather than a five foot section, there or thereabouts. But what I've done, I primed with a rattle can black. It was very hard to see because they were black already, but it gave me a little bit of something to help the paint to adhere to. And then I've, with the airbrush, I've used two colors. I've used scale color, petroleum gray. And then after that, I've used scale color, brown gray. And all I've done is you might hopefully you can see on the camera is go down the middle and over the edges of all of the um, the wooden sleepers um, and just to build a little bit of color in there now what I'm going to do now is do a very rough dry brush over all the wooden sleepers just to prick out the grain a little bit and then I'm going to do a thinned down gore grunter fur contrast wash um, over all of the, the railway sleepers just to pick up the grain a little bit after that, it will be a case of painting in all of the the steel, all of the iron. Um, probably going to go with a Scale 75 black metal for that. Maybe with a slight dry brush on the top where it's been worn away. Then after that, it will be down to weathering with those as well. So these are the tracks after I've um, dry brushed white, just to pick up the, the wood grain a little bit. And it might not be very easy to see now, but I've used a, a thinned, probably two parts water, one part um, Saigor fur contrast paint wash, um, just over all of the sleepers. Now, they're a lot darker than they would be if I was, say, doing a Western European style. I would have wanted to pick out the, uh, the, the um, the wood um, a little bit more but um, there's going to be so much kind of dust and, and dirt going on this because it's a, a desert based theme um, I wanted them quite dark to start with so that there's still some dark showing through and I'm being extremely rough with this I'm trying to complete this whole project in, in, a, in, in an evening so to speak if you remind us away the drying times um, so about three hours um, what I've done since then I've also done an overbrush so I've got a heavy dry brush of um, scale 75 black metal and then on top of that some game air silver and I've been very rough with it so I've actually left some of the black showing through deliberately um, and left some marks in it so I want it to sort of look messy and scuffed and dirty um, and that will all come back and look better once it's toned down with with later um, sand washes and powders and things as well so I've um, glossed and then added oil all over oil washes to the train um, itself. Now I've used a mixture of raw and burnt umber. Now for, for those of you that aren't familiar with using oil washes, um, I use a mixture of mix of my own most of the time. Um, Scale 75 do a nice set called Soil Works, which is a really nice range. But for raw and burnt umber, I tend to mix my own because it's cheaper. I use generally use Artist White Spirit. Um, you can use Sansador as well. It smells much, much better than the kind of the white spirit you pick up in a DIY store, but you could use that as well. It's a little bit harsher. Um, and you just mix it with your oil paint until it's like a wash, almost Agrax Earthshade kind of consistency. The consistency does matter sometimes. Um, and then you can, there's two ways you can use it really. Well, there's two ways I use it, so there's probably plenty of ways you can use it once it's made into a wash. Is you do a pin wash, it's so when you just want it to go in the recesses, um, or you do in a bit of an all over wash, which is my messy kind of terrain made or really really weathered um, tank looking method um, and what you do is when it's slightly tacky you just kind of buff it off with a with a cloth or I use old sponge um, and leave it really really messy and you, I could go on now with a damp sponge and take most of it back off as the beauty with oil paints is they take a, a long time to fully cure and this isn't fully dry yet but I want to leave this as as mockled and as dirty as possible so I've only given it a very very rough um, removal but as you can see it's already toned all of the colors down makes it look much much less um, 
kind of bright and toy-like. You can see that with the carriage here, it's already starting to look dirty and and beaten up and dusty and once I add the, the sand on top of that as well you'll have that nice mixture of the kind of grind grounding industrial staining that you get from from oil and from the soot um, and then the drier sand the, the the dust and things that you're going to get from it working in the desert as well but you can already see it's starting to fully dry here in the edges um, as a layer of dirt and it's fantastic on tanks and things I've done a really really rough job of it today no precision at all I slapped it all over and Wait for it to went tacky, and then I just pulled, you know, pulled it back off with a with a um, sponge. Um, airbrush still going on in the background there, but um, it's it, this is a kind of a mission of this is terrain. I'm not painting a tank. It's not a showpiece, but I want to see if I can produce a really cool little bit of terrain for very very cheap and under in, in sort of three three hours or so. So that's where we're up to now. Now I probably do need to leave this to to set and dry, so it may well be another day when I come back. But so far. I have spent about an hour and a half in total, in total on this, actually sitting at the desk working on it if we remove the drying times. Um, maybe even a little bit less, maybe only an hour or so, but if the, adding up the time from spraying outside, doing the job brushing, hour and a half probably. Um, so not too bad at all. I'm pretty confident that I'll get the whole thing done in, in under three hours. It may even work out as a lot less. It may only be an hour so far. Can't remember, I should have actually timed it. So the oil's dried enough for me to do a tiny bit more. Now I um, decided to do some dry brushing just on the edges to pick out um, the kind of where the paint's worn and when it's dented and things and did a bit of chipping as well. And I've used the metallic paints that I used on the tracks. So the Game Air um, Black Metal, uh, sorry, the Scale 75 Black Metal and the Game Air Silver. Um, and you can just see what I've been I've been doing there. So I'm just catching the edges, putting chips and dents in. Just gives it a little bit more of a 3D look um, and picks up where the rivets and things would have been, had the paint knocked off. Shows up very well on the little coal cart there. You'll also notice all these little orange marks on there. So I've used some of this stuff. So it's rust. Um, it's a water soluble paint. Um, it used to be called Model Mates. Um, I don't think that company exists anymore um, but they're still available from somewhere else I can't remember where I got them from now I think I googled model mates rust and I found the the new supplier of them they do lots of things they do like a moss they do a verdigrain stuff but I love this rust stuff it's really really good and it's a little bit different than using the the kind of aka the ak rust streaks and, and, and enamels it just I prefer the way it works it's a lot easier to use you can spot it on quite thick um, but you can also you know streak it you can um, spread it out afterwards so you've got that kind of orangey staining where the rust has run but you can also put it over some uh, stippling so if you've got like textured paint you can put a couple of those on and then splash this on and it looks like really really dried rust as well so it's got lots of effects you can use anyway this isn't a tutorial I might do a tutorial on how to use that at some point but as you can see I've added some rust marks on there um, some little streaks done the same on the carriage itself some rustish marks as if it's coming through on the paint, some discoloration on the roof. Um, just really had some fun being lazy and slapping it on and weathering it and knowing that it's a piece of terrain. Um, and you can get a really nice effect. So you can see rust all over the, the edge of the, the engine as well. Now that really does need to dry well now and I, I'm running out of time today. So we are up to now probably two hours with everything done. So I've got definitely no problem finishing this in under three hours. There's an AK rust wash to go on um, and then some powders to finish it off. Um, and, and that will it pretty much be, be done. So this is now with the dust wash on. So using um, AK Interactive dust and dirt deposits. Now I've mixed that down with white spirit, artist white spirit, um, probably three parts white spirit to one part this um, stuff. It's quite thick. Um, it means I can be a little bit more lazy and liberal with it and splash it over, which again, wanted to do because it's a terrain piece. If I was going to take a little bit more care and use a thin brush and paint in the recesses, you can use a little bit more, um, but you don't really need to, and it makes it, obviously makes it go further. So the next stage on these is going to be adding a little bit, a tiny bit, funnily enough, I'm going to use some Vallejo thick mud, um, just little spots, um, and then I'm going to put some weathering powders on these and over that as well, so it makes it look dry. It doesn't, it won't look like wet mud, but it just provides me with a little bit of texture. So that's the tracks up to that point, and onto the slightly more interesting bits. Let's move these out of the way, and we can look at them one by one. 
So this is the engine. I've used the same um, AK dust and dirt deposits mix. I'm a little bit less liberal than I was on the tracks, but still a lot on there. There's a few tide marks and things on there where I've washed them off but not cleaned it up. I'm not taking anywhere near as much care as I would do if I was doing a tank or something. A lot of that will be hidden on the, with the final stage, which is adding some weathering powders in there to blend it in a little bit. Um, but I think it will do the job on the table. I have to remember this is this is terrain. You can see it on the, uh, the coal compartment there. Just let it run around the edges inside there. So when it dries, it just looks like buildup of sand and dust that's blown in there. The air, the wind's carried it, and it's caught in the recesses and things. Um, and then very, very similar with the carriage itself. So the same as with the tracks, I'm gonna add a tiniest bit of European thick mud in little splotches. Um, and then when that's dry, I will go over and put some weathering pigment on there dry. Um, it'll just add a th another layer of a little bit of texture. Not much on the trains, to be honest with you. Most of that's going to be on the tracks. And then it'll be done. So I've just completed the final stages. So I did stipple on a little bit of this Vallejo thick mud, which I mentioned in the previous little section there. Um, very, very, very small amounts. You just sort of see it in areas here. So I don't want it to look like mud, obviously. This is a dry, arid, dusty area. Um, and once it's dry, um, and then I've just brushed in these dry as well, rather than mixing them with, with any white spirit or water. And so it's um, two Vallejo pigments. There's a light center and, a, and a green earth. the green earth. The green earth is kind of almost whitish. I just find it works really well as a, as a very light dusty effect. Um, and I've just brushed that in over the top of all of the, the thick mud and beyond, to be honest with you. So just have a little close little look at each of the finished bits and then I'll take you over to the, the table and I'll set it up on the battle table and we can uh, have a little look there. So you can see where, I, where they join in the middle, so it's not very realistic. I've added a little bit of that texture and some dust, but I don't think it's gonna to matter too much on the gaming table. But you can see the finished effect, very, very basic. But when it goes on the mat, I think it'll look perfect. It just looks uh, dry and dusty, and very worn on the metal, and you just, as I say, just took no time whatsoever for that part. You see the carriage there, um, so the extra Vallejo mud along the bottom and then the dust over the top of it just makes it look really dry and dirty and not very well looked after. The only bit that I don't like is you, you certain angles you can the light catches it you can see some of the yellow inside the carriage still it's such a cheap toy it wasn't easy to I tried I looked at removing the top from the base but it's not screwed in it's just clipped on and I feared I was going to break it by doing it otherwise I could have taken it off and sprayed it but um, again it's a piece of terrain if this was a railway project you'd be taking them apart and, and, and spending all the time to do it but it's not it's, it's for a game of bolt action but I'm quite happy with the way that's come out. So there's the uh, the coal cart or whatever you want to call it. Um, similar kind of stuff. So right at the beginning of the video, I talked about the reason for leaving the original colour. Um, because I felt it was a decent enough colour once weathered and I could leave on the uh, the markings and things. And you know, for me, it's how much time has it saved me rather than repainting it. Um, loads and loads of time and it, I think it looks great. I think you, it looks like it's uh, it's supposed to be there. And I think the weathering on it has, has done the job. Um, so you can see as it's dried more, that looks more and more like dried sand in there. I'll put a little bit of sort of powders onto the coal to make it look dry rather than that kind of shiny plastic. Um, overall pretty happy with it. So we are, so the engine itself, you still see the on and off there. I'm actually gonna go and put a little splodge of um, thick mud on it. I've kept the switch so I could turn it on and off. It does still work. It's gonna to go too fast to have it on the table. If it went really, really, really slowly, it might be a little bit fun. So I may end up trimming that off and covering it over. But I keep reminding myself, this is a piece of terrain. This isn't a war gaming piece. This isn't a uh, tank in my army or something, but a mixture of all of those um, weathering products. I just think it looks really dull and dusty and um, like an unkempt train in the desert. So pretty happy with it. It obviously doesn't match any particular model, I don't think, but um, um, it looks, looks realistic enough for me and the scale looks about right. I'll just sort of show you it next to uh, my uh, lieutenant. Um, I think the scale looks looks pretty good. 
you know the engine is not the largest of engines but it will, it will do the job and it won't look too hard on the battle table right so i'm going to take you over to the gaming table now um you can have a little look at it added to the stuff that i've already on got on there it's obviously not a complete um table yet there's lots more to go on there but um, i think i'll give a better idea of of the work i've done with it in context and there we are with a track placed on the table um I think it looks pretty cool. It, there's definitely a lot more terrain that needs to go on that table. I appreciate that. So please don't give me comments below. I think in my last um, bolt action vlog, um, vlog number five or six, I've lost count now, um, I did ask for some some suggestions of extra bits of terrain that would suit a uh, Second World War North African board. And I've got some really, really good suggestions so far. So thanks for everyone who's done that. Um, and I will be adding lots more to that. And if you want to see how this progresses, um, definitely check out the other videos on the channel and the Bolt Action 8th Army vlog. But what I'll do now is we'll go and have a little closer look at it. Well, thank you for watching the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and maybe found it useful. I mean, it wasn't a tutorial. I did think when I was recording it at times, maybe I should be showing myself actually doing the work. It definitely made it a longer video. Um, and I'm not sure anyone would really want a tutorial of, of turning a toy into a, uh, into a, a terrain piece. Um, and if you do, the techniques I use, I will definitely be covering in other videos if I haven't covered them already. So there, there will be something. And if you, you know, if you have any questions, do please um, answer. Put something in the comments below, and I will either direct you to something I've already done, or I'll, I'll add it to the list of videos I may do in the future. So I will cover all of the techniques that I've used in um, future videos for sure, if I haven't already. But I really enjoyed doing it. It was a good bit of fun. It was a very cheap in the end, a very cheap way of having something that's a bit more unique on the table. There are a few train kits, I think. I think Sarissa Precision might actually make some trains and things themselves, but there's not a lot out there from miniature wargaming terrain making companies that will give you trains in the right scale. So I thought it was a, a solution to a problem that I had and uh, hopefully it'll inspire other people to maybe have a go at themselves and do something like that. But I'm gonna put a few more images up on the screen now, some stills and things that are better lit than the, my shaky camera um, shots of it at the end there. So I'm really pleased with the way it came out in the end. Um, I'm looking forward to building more terrain for the table. Um, if you've uh, liked um, what you've seen on this video and you are new to the channel, please do check out the other videos on there. There's uh, a few bolt action related videos on there now, including a project vlog. Um, there's lots of American Civil War stuff with um, Warlord Games, there's Epic Battles, ACW stuff. There's a vlog on there, plenty of unboxings and painting guides and things as well. And there's also some Wars of the Roses in 10 millimeter. And there'll be plenty more. There's a little bit of Middle Earth on there. And there'll be many, many other systems and periods as and when the whim takes me. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe and all of that stuff. And I'll catch you soon.